Greetings and welcome to the basement. In this video, we're going to take a look at getting Playmaker set up and installed. Now, of course, the first thing to ask is where did you get Playmaker from? If you are a student, you do have the ability to get an educationally priced version of Playmaker that is fully featured. You just can't use it for commercial projects. I can't show downloading that version of Playmaker because I don't have the educational version, I have the full version. If you have the educational version, you will have to download the Unity package from whichever educational retailer you got it from, and then you will have to import it in as a custom package. For example, you would come down here to Projects, or you could come over here to Assets, either way works, and say Import Package, Custom Package, navigate to where it is and select the appropriate package and then proceed to import it. If you got the full version through the Unity Asset Store, you will of course need to go to the Asset Store and find it. Now, you can go to My Assets and download it from there. However, if you happen to be a sucker for Humble Bundles and or you've been at this Unity thing for a long time, uh, finding a specific asset in here might be a little bit challenging. Uh, personally, I just simply do a search for Playmaker and download it from the store page this way whenever I need to bring it into a project. Regardless, find the Playmaker asset page, and if you have not already downloaded it, this will say Download instead of Import. Click on the Download button, get the asset downloaded, and then you will be able to click on the Import button to bring the package into your project. You most definitely want to just accept everything here and hit Import. Now, this is the odd part. Once this import process is done, you have not brought Unity, or you have not brought Unity in yet. Uh, words, they're helpful. You have not brought in Playmaker yet you still actually have to install Playmaker. <coughs> that was just sort of installing the Playmaker launcher, so to speak. We still have to go through and click on this Install Playmaker option right here on this window. Now, what do you do if this window's disappeared or you closed it or somehow you've lost track of that window? No worries. Upon importing the Playmaker framework, you will have a Playmaker menu option up here, in which case you can click on it and select Install Playmaker, which will bring this window back. Now, this is a blank project. You do not need to do a pre-update check because there's nothing that you can mess up. If this is an existing project, and especially if you are updating Playmaker versions, you will want to do that pre-update check to avoid issues. I'm just going to go ahead and click on Install Playmaker. I'm lying, I haven't actually made a backup, but it's fine, because, again, empty project, right? The make a backup thing actually is a good idea if you have an already existing extensive project that you're trying to integrate Playmaker into. And once again, once it asks you, well, exactly what do you want to import, you're going to just select everything. Now, depending on your uh, computer speed, this may or may not take a bit of time. This machine's reasonably fast, so this shouldn't take too long. So just a quick couple of words about Playmaker while it's installing. Playmaker is what's called a finite state machine. This has some very significant implications for how you use Playmakers. Effectively, in a finite state machine, you can only ever be in a single state in a machine at any given time. Now you can have multiple machines running, but in one specific machine, you can only have one state active. This is a very critically important thing to keep in mind when you are working with Playmaker. When you are looking at a Playmaker state machine, an FSM, always keep in mind only one of those states can be active at any given time. Very important, and we'll talk much more about that in later videos. All right, now that my Playmaker has been successfully installed, I can close out this window. Now, I like to uncheck this little tick box here because I do not want to see this window every time I open up my project. But that, of course, is a personal 
preference. And now, at this point, Playmaker is ready to use. However, there are a couple of other steps that I just sort of consider part of the whole setup process that I want to go over here. Because while Playmaker is set up and ready to be used, I can't really actually use it until I've opened up a couple of windows. So I'm going to come over here to Playmaker, and the first thing I'm going to do is open up the Playmaker editor, which is going to pop open this dockable window right here. Now, when I'm working on personal projects and I'm not recording, I will typically have that window over on my second monitor. Obviously, that's not going to work particularly well when I'm recording, so I'm going to show you my single screen setup that I tend to use for Playmaker, but it really is best if you have the ability to use dual monitors, which as a game developer, you want dual monitors. Trust me on that. But if you don't have the ability to set up dual monitors, works just fine. What I will typically do is I will dock the Playmaker window in the same window that I have my game and scene windows on because having this large visible space here is generally a good thing when working with the Playmaker window. And then I'm going to come over here for the editor windows and I'm going to bring in the action browser. Again, this is a dockable window. And I will typically dock the action browser in the same area that I have the inspector. So that way I can have a state machine visible and the action browser to make it easy to bring things over. There are, of course, a lot of other windows that you can have available. I will typically not have all of these windows open because that can get a bit messy. Things that are good to have open um, perhaps the state browser, the FSM browser um, are very useful, especially the FSM browser if you've got multiple state machines going on. Also the global variables, if you're going to be using those, that is a very useful window to have open. Uh, the remainder of these windows are very much situational dependent. And as they come up, I will talk about those windows. And that's it. Short and sweet, unlike most of my videos. And if you appreciated the brevity of this video and you thought you learned something useful, well, go ahead and give it a like. And, well, if it was too brief and or just simply a waste of your time, the dislike button is right next to it. Until next time.